Psalms 42, he brought me up also out of a horrible pit, out of the miry clay, and set my feet upon a rock and established my goings. Everybody say pit. pit. Amen. First Peter 5, 8 through 11. We're given some instructions that if you read through them too quickly, you won't fully understand how to get victory. Because if you don't remain sober, if you don't remain vigilant, you won't realize the adversary has you in its grasp. So be sober, be vigilant. No, don't, don't, don't take your salvation for granted. Repenting, getting baptized in Jesus' name, getting the Holy Ghost is the beginning of the journey, not the ending. You have the Gospels, which talk about the story of Jesus, the establishing of of his uh, his building a church acts is the the establish of the church and what you must do to be saved and all the epistles after that are people that have followed the plan of of salvation and are getting instructions on how to live for god anybody ever bought something you got it home and you just wanted to use it and you bypass the instructions and before you knew it you got a problem on your hands i see that's like a male problem but we would hello amen because your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour. Whom resists steadfast, where? In the faith. You got to stay in the church. Yes, sir. Amen. Knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. They don't have it worse. They don't have it better. But they don't have a place to go. They don't have a God to call on, but we do. Amen. Amen. But the God of all grace, who hath called us unto his eternal glory by Christ Jesus, after that ye have suffered a while. Everybody say, I'm going to suffer. But look at this. Make you perfect, establish, strengthen, oh, hallelujah, settle you. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. I, I want to talk for just a few moments this morning, if you'll help me. The lion in your pit. The lion in your pit. Jesus, we love you. We praise you. We thank you. We need you today, God. We can do nothing without you. I ask for your help today to bring this forward to your wonderful saints of God. Help me, allow me to walk in your spirit. Feel the unction and the nudge of your presence as we endeavor to draw closer to you today than we've ever been before. And everybody said in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. God bless you. You can be seated. Ephesians lets us know that for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world. This this world as rulers of darkness. I don't want to get spooky or talk about the boogeyman, but there's issues. We have an ungodly world we live in. Friendship with the world is enmity with God. That's his word. In other words, you be, if you're worldly, you become an enemy to the things of God and to God. That, that, that's, man, I know that's tough preaching. But you have to understand, and that's why, you know, I, I say some things that the worldly people think, are you out of your mind? Give up my music, give up my movies, give up my TV. I'm not telling anybody to do that. But if you want to successfully live for God, those things are going to hinder you. They're going to mess with your mind. They call them a program for a reason. They want you to relinquish your ability to think and learn and just sit in front of that thing so they can program you. It's just true. I, I don't know who said it. I think Steve Martin said, everything I learned about life, I learned at the movies. Well, maybe, not, maybe now we understand a lot of the problems. Hello? Because I'm also speaking about our inner struggle today. I'm talking about 
that lion in your life? The one we don't tell people about. Throughout scripture, the people of God had to face lions. It's all throughout scripture. It, it seems to be a proving ground. It's the rite of spiritual passage. Many people aspire to do things for God, but you're not going to be able to focus on doing for God when you're still trying to avoid a lion that you allowed to let live. The writer of Hebrews says, let your conversation be without covetousness yes. and be content with such things as ye have. I think that's a big struggle in America today because we're always wanting. Yes. Ungoverned want, ungoverned getting. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. God is saying, I'm not going to leave you. I'm not going to forsake you. While all the things that we think we want or we chase... It's all going to leave us. And the qualifying point is when you focus on the Lord being your need and your want, you can boldly say, the Lord is my helper, and I will not fear what shall men do unto me. Lions are God's testing grounds. Look at the life of David, Daniel, Samson. We're all admonished to take note of them. There's an obscure passage of scripture that I want to go to and many have probably read, but it doesn't really arrest a lot of attention. The name's difficult to say. It's in the Old Testament and sometimes in reading your Bible, rather than looking for the story and the meaning, we just kind of read through it. But in 2 Samuel 23 and 20, if you'd like to join me there, it says in Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, the son of a valiant man of Kabazil, who had done many acts. He slew two lion-like men. Now, I, I, I could add this, but for the sake of time, your seats and lunch, we'll, we'll, we'll leave that for another time and go to the next. Men of Moab, he went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in the time of snow. It's interesting to know that Benaiah's name means Jehovah has built up. Don't bypass God building you. Don't, don't miss the classes, the lessons, and don't, don't miss the teachings. And I don't know what it is about today, but there's just a spirit of today that the last thing anybody wants to be told is how to improve. There's an arrogance, there's an obstinance, there's a there's a just a, just a spirit of of rebellion rebellion against authority and being taught. The Bible says um, he, he he had done many acts and he slew two lion like men. But then he went down on a snowy day. Okay, that's a bad day. Okay, maybe this is a little more personal for me. I don't like snow. If it's snowing, it's a bad, it's a cold day. It's a dark day. So I don't like, I live here for a reason, folks. Snow is winter time. It's a dark time. You get five minutes of sun, you know? So he's got a day and it's snowing. He's dealing with a lion. This is not a good day, folks. Now, this story has absolutely no bearing on major biblical doctrines. Its focus is not on religious acts or ceremony. The plan of salvation is not found in its context. But I believe that if you will search this, you'll realize that there are some lessons to be learned here. It shows us commitment. Loyalty, yes. consecration, and character. It shows the things that are needed to make who you're going to be come together to produce a great productive person for God. 
If you don't slay the lion, if you allow the lion in your life to continue to torment, to chase, to pester, to bother, you're never going to focus on being something to the kingdom of God. You stay with me. I'm going to prove my point. You have probably read in your one year Bible this story, but one of the inspirational versions of the Bible says it this way. There was also Benaiah, the son of Jehoiada, a valiant warrior from Kabizel. He, he did many heroic deeds, which included killing two of Moab's mightiest warriors. He chased a lion down into a pit. Then despite the snow, the slippery ground and odds that are already stacked against him going against the lion. He somehow caught it and killed it. Bravo. Wow. My guy. It's so easy to read about this in the comfortable confines of the church or our living room. He totally missed the monumental acts of courage displayed by a man like Beniah. He's not only taking out lions, but lion-like men. He's a bad dude. He's the kind of warrior you'd like to have around. He's the kind of man you'd like to have in your church. He's the kind of person that's nice to know who's on your side. Listen, a person's Talents, integrity, and abilities set the beginning level of their success. Listen to me. Talent, integrity, ability. But it's the anointing coupled with your character that sets how high you go. If, if you don't have integrity in all the affairs of your life, if you don't have a character that God wants to anoint, you're stuck, not because of the lack of opportunity, a lack of taking care of the lions that will keep you from ever being successful at the next level. Why did he go after it? Why would he take on such an assignment? There are just some difficult things in life that, you know, I don't want to tackle that one yet. Look, it's safe to say that it's not every day you face moments where that level of courage to face a lion is needed. I, I didn't face that today. Hey, man, I got here. I think the hardest thing I did today was make my dog's food. He's a big dog. He's got a bowl about the size of a five-gallon bucket, and he's very demanding. And I don't want to face him coming home if he's got to wait till 1 o'clock to eat, 2 o'clock by the time I get home. No lion, just a dog. But it's sure good to know that there are some people still today that are not afraid to deal with the difficult things of life. There are people today that are probably sitting next to you right now that are willing to take on those hindering, pesky lions that seem to be devouring other folks. I'm glad, I, I, and I'm, I'm thankful for those folks that are, you know what, I'm not going to sit here and be the same five years from now. Lions are dying today. Lions will be dealt with in my life. I will not allow them to roam freely. Now, I'm sure Benaiah could, could feel the danger to his personal safety. But his character and his courage propelled him to take on a task that wasn't only for his safety, but those around him. When you finally realize when you walk into the church, it's not just about you, but I need victory over my lions because of my brother and my sister. Oh, let me make this play. You come in here with a lustful problem. That may affect somebody else. You come in here with a problem that you listen to the carnal stuff that may cause some of that. 
You may have some lions to kill and you're stuck where you're at and you're not going to go further until you start killing lions because of the danger to yourself and those around you. Your children ain't called to kill the lions you are. Are you hearing me today? Because when you kill that lion, you make things better for everybody around you. That's the kind of people God notices when he's looking for someone. You're, yeah, just quit looking for an opportunity because then you're like, well, then I'll rise up and kill my lion. No, kill your lion and you'll get the opportunity. Amen. 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 But I knew it didn't take a, a rocket scientist to realize it. It really didn't take someone with a PhD to realize That if I kill that lion, it ain't going to hurt anybody else either. See, when you deal with something, you got a bad spirit. You got a poor attitude. You're going to complain about your brother, gossip about your sister, make a ridicule here. When you can kill that lion, you get rid of the danger that can hurt other people. When you're a wife, that'll encourage your husband. And you're a husband, that'll help your wife. You start to realize you're killing lions. That'll get both of you if you let it live. Let me tell you why there's some spiritually dead people. Because the other one ain't killing that lion. Listen, when you confront and can kill personal lions... It's safer for everybody. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Listen, we got certain departments and division. We got Sunday school teachers. We got youth department. All this. Man, I want those leaders to be lion killers. I want to know we drop young people off here. We got a bunch of, I got a youth team that ain't letting lions live in their own lives. Don't get up and preach to young people about this and then you go out there and act like a jack wagon. Remember the integrity and the character I talked about? I may not bring it up again, but don't forget, that's the prerequisite to say, I'm killing the lion. The reason you let the lion of greed and gossip and ridicule and narcissism live is because you're not ready to go forward. It ain't the church's fault you where you are. Kill the lion, you'll move up. When you kill the lion of your struggle, When you kill that lion of rebellion or sin or lust, whatever your lion is, insert your struggle there. You help everyone around you. You raise the level for everybody. Many people profess their allegiance based on adherence to doctrines. Oh, I believe the same doctrine we're on the same. No, hold on now. Many profess loyalty, loyalty based on words. They say many feel that merely showing up is enough. Some people even think association is all it takes. But that's not how God takes things. God separates people by what you actually do. God not only watches our words and our conduct, he watches our business dealings. God looks earnestly. At our integrity. Amen. Case in point, you got Saul and David. Listen, if you're just happy being king for a moment, no matter how you go out, then be a Saul. If you just want it for a minute, man, I'm, I, anybody can achieve and, and get accolades from everybody for a minute. Are you hearing what I'm saying? God looks earnestly at us because your integrity is the true manifestation of everything you are. If there's something that's more important to you than God, he, he, you can bamboozle us, but not him. He knows if the lion and the bear is still there. It may be lurking in the woods or a pit, but he knows. God knows who is shady and who is sincere. Come on, Pastor. God knows who's looking out for themselves and looking out for the church. Come on. God knows who the cowards are and the courageous. Oh. God knows who's here to work and who's here to just slide by. That's right. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You know, it, it's not often that we ever 
really meet anybody or hear someone that they chase lions for a living. It's not exactly a safe pastime or hobby. It's, you know, unless I was in bad graces with Sister Crow, I really doubt she'd want me to do it. Now, if I was a moron, she'd say, hey, why don't you take up the hobby of chasing lions? You might have to think that one through, right? This, this, this Benaya guy, he didn't, he didn't have an elephant gun, Brother Terry. He didn't have a big old 357 on his hip. He wasn't, you know, as cool as Clint Eastwood and as big and bad as John Wayne. He wasn't walking around like Crocodile Hunter thinking, I got this. He had primitive weapons. He wasn't driving a Jeep or a Land Rover rolling up in there with his, you know, Australian accent looking for something to put on the Bobby. <laughs> With some shrimp. He didn't have the latest tracking devices. He was watching tracks in the snow of a familiar area. I, I kind of wonder, type in shadow or parabolic, if we can't take this as benign, it was kind of going back to that pit from which he'd been done, our old self. You ever been the kind of person every now and then when no one's looking, you go back to your old ways and your old self and your old thinking and your old music and you have that, you think it's a glory days and you don't realize there's a lion lurking. And you're more associated with that than where you're supposed to be going. Scripture doesn't give us too many details on what Benaiah was doing or where he was going when he encountered the lion. And I look at that like, well, I'm going to go to evangelistically take this thing to a place to maybe help somebody. I don't know what time of day it was. I don't know his circumstances. So for the sake of honesty, let's be real. If you find yourself in the vicinity of a lion... Why don't we just leave that bad boy be? <laughs> I'm going this way. I'm going to go this way. Hello? I was telling some of the story the other day. I don't remember who it was. But man, I like to hunt. Well, it was a few years there. Well, I still like to hunt. I just, it's a commitment I made that I'm not going to do anymore. I was walking through the woods, boy, and I was coming into a clearing, and I just, man, I always loved that clearing, but I got in the middle of that thing, and I, okay, you know that hair stands up on the back of your neck, feel the tingle down your spine, and you look, and it ain't a candid camera moment, there's something looking at me that thinks I'm dinner, and I just, boy, I just kind of, I drew my old stainless 357, and I just kind of backed out of there, kind of felt like I might have been something's lunch. Why not just quietly back out of the situation, Benaya? You know, let's avoid the confrontation. Someone else can deal with that and risk their neck, right? You see, if you don't deal with the lion, someone else is going to have to come along and kill it. Because if the lion's allowed to live, it's going to hurt people. If you're the kind of person that can look past the need for your selfishness and move well, let someone else, let pastor take care of that one. Let somebody else pick. Let somebody else teach that Bible study. Let somebody else take care of that need. Let some, oh, no, that, no, that, that might cost me. I got personal things I want to do, safer things for me. But I think about Benaiah being a man of integrity. A man of honor. A man that God allowed to be tested by the lion. And I'm not just talking about men, ladies. I mean, we got some amazing ladies around here. Oh, we got some ladies with integrity, and we need we need more, bless God. We need we need ladies willing to take on lions that might try to creep into their home. Boy, we, we, if we ever needed godly, holy ladies today, we need it now. And so maybe he realized, uh, you know what? I can't let this lion live. It's a sheep killer. You know, some people want, why pastor preaching on that so hard? Because it's a sheep killer. 
I don't care who or what you used to be or what you say you was or like to be. If there's a lion living, you need to be a lion killer. I don't care about nothing else. You need to be what the need calls for. And it, oh, that's not my job. That's not my response. I don't need them, folks. You're adding lions to the problem. This was a man eater. Maybe this lion was a child or a teenage killer. Maybe there had been reports of a rogue lion terrorizing people and, and killing people. Maybe it's causing chaos to everyone. And we're warned about lions spiritually. Be sober, be vigilant. There are lions about. Can I tell you, I, 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 great people are, were just average people that realized there was a need and that somebody needed to do something. Great people are just average people that decided and realized, you know what? There's a need here and somebody needs to do something. I wish there was a somebody in the house today. I wish there was an anybody in the house today. Boy, I wish I could have sing that song about somebody telling anybody. or I, I, I don't remember it right now and I didn't think of it. It's not my notes, so we can't go there. But somebody that can look and step up and become that someone today and be like a David. Is there not a cause? I wonder if when he realized what he said when he faced the giant. Saul allowed Goliath to roam. Every soldier allowed Goliath to roam and bellyache and, and call out. But see, David came from a lineage of we don't let lions and bears roam about. We don't let those stay. It's not safe. It could hurt somebody. It could hurt the sheep. I got to get that thing. I got to kill that thing. I got to save the sheep. I'm not just doing it for my safety. I'm getting rid of that problem. I'm getting rid of that sin. I'm getting rid of that issue because it endangers everybody. Oh, I wish I had a fired up saint right now. If your mantra in ministry isn't, is there not a cause? Sit down. If you can't find it to go outside your schedule or your comfort zone, then trust me, you ain't ready for a lion. Come on, Pastor. You know. We don't get much out of scripture, but I believe it does reveal his gut reaction. And it was gutsy. Maybe foolhardy. Come on, man. Who denies themselves today? Who goes without things they can afford to do something for God? Who literally gives radically and lives modestly? So, Who really is all in for the church and it's not just a pastime or a hobby or a place you show up on a Sunday? Oh, oh man, brother Crow Pat, man, I, he gets a little, a little, a little excited, a little passionate about this thing. That's because there's lions. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You have to understand that that this this little portion of scripture reveals. Something and it, it probably ranks as one of the most improbable reactions recorded in scripture because usually, when the sight of a, a man eating beast uh, with a cool, dark, flowing mane all of a sudden appears before your eyes and through the optical nerve and registers in the visual cortex of the brain. We usually have one overriding message. Steer clear, avoid danger, run away. Average people run away from lions. Average people avoid lions. Average people steer clear of above average challenges. Do I need to say that again? Average people steer clear of above average challenges. 
You see, you see, see, if you aspire or you desire the officer, you have to understand you can't be average. You can't look around and see where you average out on the crowd. You see, because average people avoid anything that might be difficult. Average people avoid anything that may cost them. Average people avoid anything that may not allow them to have what they think they need. They run as far and as fast as they possibly can to preserve their life, to preserve their comfort, to preserve all the things that they, they, they just feel that they got to have. And they find a compromise with placing comfort over courage. Because something needs to happen when you see a lion. And we find out who and what you are when there's a lion about. You can't, you, you can get all the excuses you want, but if there's danger, spiritual or otherwise, the above average stand up, hey, we can't let this go. Is there not a cause? I'm going to risk it all because this, I can't say that I'm anything if I let the lion live. Lion chasers are wired differently. We, do, we, we confuse people. We, we, we break from northern. Something about it. Oh, we, 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 what are you doing giving that? Why are you trying that hard? Why do you preach like that? Why are you giving like that? I'm chasing lions. I don't want no one to get hurt from it. Courageous folks stand out. The Bible is full of folks who decided not to be average anymore. You see, you see there, everybody starts out average, but it's what you do that sets you apart. Not what you say, not what you think, not what you intend, but what you actually do. People who step up and take on great challenges and tasks. Folks who take on and do more than what anybody would have expected. God's followers love their life. Love not their life unto death. Right. Right. People that believe God do great things for him. People of faith do things that have caused others to flee in fear. For the vast majority, the only lions some people have ever counted are stuffed or caged. But try to place yourself in Benaiah's shoes today. It's your life. It's your territory. With your family and your babies and everything that you hold dear. I don't know how far the lion was away from Benaiah. Their view was possibly obscured by maybe some brush or the falling snow. Maybe their alert, the presence of each other was alerted by the puffs of breath on the crisp, cold air. But there was a moment. Brother Jonathan, there was an instant. A millisecond when the truth was revealed. When Benaiah and the lion locked eyes. The moment you decide who and what you're going to be. Well, but nothing else, Matt. Don't cloud it with all that other junk. You, you can't turn around. Well, I would have if I didn't. No, 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 no. The moment you realized an enemy that could hurt anybody in your, your family, your baby, you, anyway. Are you going to let it live? Let me just avoid this one and go find a comfortable place to sit down because, you know, this ministry thing, uh, or this head of my household thing, doesn't, this doesn't allow me to have all the proclivities and the things that I like. I, you know, I still want to listen to this, and I still want to, uh, maybe I'm just not called to that level. Come on. Yeah. Well, either way, you're right. Come on. Come on. So the moment they see, Sister Carol, the moment they lock eyes, pupils dilate. I can imagine is that frame of that 800-pound line, brother, churning those muscles. I was hunting one time, and I, I had set up on a spot. I 
Well, I was waiting for the deer, and I was wondering why the deer weren't coming. Next thing you know, I got a bear 20 yards in front of me. I wasn't worried at first. I was ready. But I didn't want to have that two-foot and three-foot encounter. I'm, I'm a bow hunter, okay? So, man, I've had deer and elk and all sorts. Of, I've, I've seen the whites of their eyes. I had elk walk by me this close. I could have smacked them. And so this bear, I thought it was cool at first. Then I said, wait a minute. Closer. Now, listen, it's a bear. Uh, look, you guys don't scare me. Even you big guy, you don't scare me. But a bear, I don't think he has any feelings. <laughs> I, I think if Brother Joe had me down, he was pounding my head, and he'd think, oh, man, that's enough blood. I need to let the man up. But I don't think a bear is going to think that way. I don't know that he's going to say, poor little fella. I'll let you up now. Are you okay? I don't think he's going to do that. And I'm looking at this guy, and he didn't bother me at first. And I was kind of letting it close because I, I could show you pictures and videos of stuff. Of, I've had foxes and elk and right in front of me. It's, it's, it's in me. And I was still in that mode. And I went, whoa, 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 wait a second. That's a bear. No, I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed. I get it. This is sometimes I ain't all the way thinking all the dogs aren't barking. I don't have a full deck, whatever colloquialism you want to put there. But it dawned on me. Hold on a minute. That's not a deer. This, that thing's got teeth and claws. So I just slowly raised, just talk, talk, talk. Hey, bear. Hey, bear. Hey, bear. And then he finally heard me and he looked. Hey, bear. Okay, now you go on your way. And he turned to go and I was cool. But he stopped and looked back and took a look to look at it. Oh, 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 hold on. Oh, oh, wait. It entered his mind. That, that, this might be an easy lunch. Maybe he did. He said, that's a two-legger. I came in. These four-legged deer and elk have been a little bit hard to keep, but that's a two-legger right there. I didn't mind the first look. That second look bothered me a little bit. It kind of, whoa, okay. So, boy, I, I was like, I let him know I was ready to fight. Uh, oh, don't kid yourself. I ain't going to go down without a fight. See, you play dead with a grizzly, but a black bear, you better fight that dude. And if you didn't know that going in, it's a good thing you weren't me. Uh, bear, black bears ain't going to stop. you got to punch them. you got to do something. you gotta, you got to do, do something. And when I did that, I just took a couple steps for him, and I made myself as big as I could. And he decided, okay, this two-legger is willing to fight, and he left me alone. Now, that's just a bear. But now he's facing a lion. And I don't know what necessarily his adrenaline did, but I know what mine did with that bear. So imagine the pupils have dilated, the muscles have tensed, the adrenaline all of a sudden gets dumped into the system, blood pressure escalates. The mind, and I'm going to tell you, the mind tunes everything. I wasn't deer hunt when I saw that bear anymore. I wasn't thinking about my, I wasn't thinking about what was for lunch. I wasn't thinking about that little snack in my back. Oh, no, no, no. My, shoo. you need to understand something. Be sober, revisit. Some of you better get focused back on them. You got an issue at hand. Let's go. Let's You're worried go. about all this and all that, and you've missed focus. There's an enemy that's seeking who he may devour. And benign is in a situation, and his mind tunes everything out, and these adversaries have locked eyes, and decisions are being made. And the choice is offered up. What will the lives of each one in this conflict, what will their lives mean is now being decided. I'm sure before this encounter, that lion was fairly confident. Lion encounters tend to script the same way. Lion and man meet. Man runs. Lion gives chase. King of the beasts eats a manwich. <laughs> but not this time. Not this moment. Decisions were made. The average Joe made a decision to not be average. Average. 
The lion somehow saw something in Benai. He saw, you have to understand, according to the lion saw something in that man. He's probably eaten others. He's probably had some children or whatever you want to put there. This lion decides, wait a minute. Not this one. Not today. Not I'm leaving. Now, lions can run an estimated 35 miles per hour in bursts. Some of them have been known to leap over 30 feet in a single bound. That's pretty staggering compared to us humans. So technically, Benaiah didn't stand a chance, but that didn't keep him from giving chase. That old pit lion still needed to be defeated. And Benaiah was like, I'm not gonna face you again. I'm dealing with you today. today. The lion makes one critical misstep. Oh. He, he, he went somewhere where Benaiah knew I've been defeating stuff from that place a long time and I'm going to finally finish the last lion of my pit. And that lion, the ground gives way beneath and that lion drops into a pit. That steep embankment and the snow is swirling. It's the moment of truth. As Benaiah approached, he's going, he's heading to that old pit from which you and I were dug. There's lion in there. And, and as he walks up there, he peers into that pit and he sees those, those piercing yellow eyes looking back at him. You ever had one of those moments? But you do something crazy and ask yourself in retrospect, what was I thinking? But you're glad you did. You, you don't know where you found the courage. You don't know where you found the tenacity. You don't know uh, what was I thinking taking the church? What was I thinking getting married? What was I thinking signing for that house? What was I thinking? What was I thinking with these crazy kids? What was I thinking with this job? What was? Mm. It's that old lion just trying to give, make you second guess your loyalty and your integrity and your commitments. Make to, to question everything of who, who you are and aspire to be. And who in their right mind chases a lion? It would be, ah, uh, you know, it didn't quite, wasn't quite what I thought it was. But a person of integrity doesn't change their decision and their commitment because it don't turn out or didn't look. They stay with it because that's what they are, who they are. Benaiah collects his thoughts. Yeah. And he finds that spiritual sanity. And he gets a grip on reality. And the reality is this. You know what? Average people don't chase lions. Average people don't challenge lions. Average people don't pursue God with all their heart either. Average folks don't deny themselves either. Oh, I don't know if you're with me or not. You see, you have to understand, average people come and go. But above average people, they're steady, they're stalwart. They're, they're, if there's a need, they show up. If there's a lion, they're on the hunt. They, you have to understand, Paul even made a, made a statement in Philippians. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. You know what he didn't say? When it's convenient, when it's comfortable, when it fits my needs, when everything's going to be okay, when I can keep all my stuff, when I'm going to be looked at. But now in an instant, he did something that a lot of us struggle with. The metaphor of the pit is now he's no longer in view of everybody. This is a personal fight. This is going to be a personal private victory. Mm. See, the sad thing, and we've come to a world today where people don't want to do anything if they're not going to get glory or seen for doing it. You're looking for men's approval. You, you want someone to see, oh, you're a good guy. But Benaiah disappears in the recesses of a personal pit, making a decision that there's only one coming out of here alive. 
And he's going in there with blood and design and full intention of what he's going to do. And every one of us has to come to that place in our walk with God. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, it doesn't matter who or what you think you are, what you've been. The truth is when it comes to living for God, when you drop down in that pit, you got to realize I'm not coming back here no more. And yes. this pit is going to become the grave of the last lane. That thing that's hindered me. Oh, 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 it may be something you want and you can rationalize, but there comes a time when you got to be on. I cannot do for God what I need to if I let these lions live. It's destroying my family. It's destroying my ministry. It's destroying my household. I've made it about everything but God, and it's time to kill the lion in my pit. And as he jumps down there, I believe full throttle, suddenly a deafening roar echoes from that pit. The battle cry pierces the crisp air. Breath rises. A roar echoes across the valley. Just as quick as it started, dead silence. Without fanfare. After a few agonizing moments of suspense, the shadow, as a man emerges from a bloody pit. Steps out, stands to his feet, wipes the sweat from his brow, wipes the blood off his hand. Benina, Benaiah has won one of the most improbable victories recorded in scripture he was not the first and I pray he will not be the last to defeat his lion God is in the business of strategically positioning each and every one of us at the right place in the right time a sense of destiny is your birthright as followers of Christ. God as, is good at getting us where he wants us to go, but there's a catch. The right place often seems like the wrong place. And the right time often seems like the wrong time. Encountering a lion in the wild is typically a bad thing, a really bad thing. But purposely placing yourself in a pit with a lion on a snowy day. I don't know what kind of scale you'd use because those combination of circumstances usually spells one thing. Death. I don't think anybody would have bet on Benaiah winning that fight. And there are some of you sitting there right now and you're thinking about that lion. And you're locking eyes right now and you're not telling anybody about that lion because you're wondering if you really have to defeat that or not. And those snowy conditions are obscuring your vision. You really don't know if it's necessary or not. Scripture doesn't give us a blow-by-blow -blow description of what happened in the pit. All we know is that when the snow and dust settled, the lion was dead and Benaiah was alive. But when you stop and realize and go a few verses past this, you find out that that test that Benaiah passed did something for him that never would have come to pass. You fast forward two verses and look. In 2 Samuel 23, 23 says that David put Benaiah in charge of his bodyguard. If you ever want, to be a defender of the faith, a defender of the king. You got to kill lions, others won't. You got to be willing to go into pits, others don't want to regard. If you want to be a defender and a bodyguard of the king of kings and the lord of lords, if you really want to rest and step behind places that others won't go, you got to be willing to kill lions, others won't face. It's for your family to get the victory they need. We're looking for some benign spirited people today that they're tired of losing and they're tired of running and they're tired of hiding and they're tired of low living. 
You got to understand as David is looking to, to, to fill the positions. <laughs> And he's going over resumes. And he saw Benaiah's, look, this dude right here. I know he'll do what needs to be done. He, if he can kill lions in his life, he's not afraid to help anybody kill lions in there. You see, you got to admit something. If you have on your resume before the king, uh, I, I, you know, I killed a lion in a pit on a snowy day one day. Huh. That's pretty impressive. I'm pretty sure. Hey, do you check this out? Look at this. Hey, let me, where, where's it? Oh, that, oh, that's him. Check it. Ooh. I'll tell you what. All these positions, are, I want to put this guy over the protection of the king. Come on, Pastor. Anybody know what I'm saying today? Amen. I just pictured David flipping through a stack of resumes. <laughs> uh, all these people with these other resumes. Ah, oh, you know what? Uh, uh, I showed up now and then for service on time. I, I even made it to prayer a few times. I taught a Sunday school lesson back in 85. No, I, I gave a special offering back in 96. And David comes to a resume. I have killed a lion and pit in a snowy day. Can we be brutally honest with ourselves? I doubt David looked for references. <laughs> because David found a man after his own heart. Because David could relate. Lion killers recognize lion killers. Amen. David had a kindred spirit. Because David had been in a situation before. He, 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 he just wanted to do what needed to be done. And King Saul is there. And King Saul had been embarrassed. The entire body of Christ, of Israel, was being embarrassed by a Philistine fool standing there, bellowing and echoing and challenging for just one man willing to fight. Amen. Amen. Can I tell you something? That right there says Goliath was a coward. Oh, yeah. I mean... Joe, you're a big guy, but if you stood up and said, I'm going to whoop Lawrence and Brother Corey, I'm going to be like, so? You're twice the size of them. Yeah. Let's add me to the mix. Uh -huh. yeah. Now we're going to be talking. Why wasn't Goliath calling out three or four guys? Huh. Some of you need to realize your enemy's a coward. But until you get bold, yeah. you're going to be afraid of a coward. So David said to Saul, thy servant kept his father's sheep. There's in, there's in pesky sheep again. Sheep matter to God. Yes, they do. The church matters to Come God. On. You know what? You, you may be good at your flock, but we, uh, uh, someone that's bold, someone that's above average, cares about the whole herd. Yeah, right. And there came a lion and a bear. And I took the lamb out of the flock. And it took a lamb out of the flock, and I went out after him. What? When David read Benaiah's story about chasing a lion, he's like, the lion killer. Come on. Well, there's a kindred spirit. Oh, my yeah, God, man. There's something about lion killers recognize lion killers. Yeah. Bold people recognize bold. People on fire for God aren't intimidated by other people on fire. Uh, let's all stand. I want to wrap this up. Get ready to come to the music. You got a minute. I'm not done, but that's all stand. You stay on fire. You don't intimidate me one bit because we're fighting the same enemy. Get it? Stop it. Let's get this done. You don't intimidate me.
We're all out to kill lions. This world is full of lions that need to die. We got warring lions. We need people that are saying, wait a minute. I got a lion to kill. I got a song to sing. I got a message to preach. I got prayers to pray. Wait a minute. I want a church full of lion killers. We should have a ministry staff ready to blow up and build another building. Start a three more building. What's going on? We need lion killers. You realize that David's story mirrors Benias. And he, and he said, and I went after and I smote him and delivered it out of his mouth. And when he arose against me, I caught him by his beard. He grabbed that mane. He smote him and slew him. Thy servant slew both the lion and the bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine shall be as one of them, seeing that he defied the armies. Living God. David recognized the attributes that were needed to go what the job required. This kind of person is what you want in charge of your bodyguard. True ministry recognizes true ministry. Most people would have seen the lion as a 500-pound problem, but not to the Benias of this world. They realize the opportunity isn't given on comfort and ease. Opportunity is given by the person willing to take on the problem. Those people who you find doing the work of the Lord without complaint. It's those folks who step up of their own accord without ever being asked. It's those folks who shine even on the darkest of snowy days. Yeah. Their issues uh, are, 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 are resume, are opportunities, not excuses to be absent or AWOL. For most people finding yourself in a pit, with a lion on a snowy day would qualify, oh, it's a bad day. But can you see how God turned what could have been considered as a bad break to his big break? It's what he'd been waiting for. You have to understand, most folks miss their moments of elevation because their integrity doesn't live up to the kingdom opportunity. God is always building resumes. Ezekiel tells us that I saw it for a man among them right now. I can tell you as pastor, he's looking for a man. Amen. He's looking for a lady. All oh, that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy, but I found. Jesus said it this way the harvest truly is plenteous but the laborers are few uh, do you know how to spell leadership in God's kingdom it's not the finest suit not the most eloquent words it's spelled L-A-B-O-R-E-R-S or in the King James, L-A-B-O-U-R-E-R-S. Laborers are the leaders. Those willing to roll up their sleeves. Not afraid. Not ducking and hiding over in another building while all the work's going on. Not, not, not showing up. because No, but saying, wait a minute, where's the, where's the lion? Where's the lion? For the eyes of the Lord, and Second Chronicles says, run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong. Not weak. Not distracted. Not passive. On behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Jesus. I can tell you, integrity never lacks opportunity. Benaiah lands a job interview with the king of Israel. I'm sure the bodyguard position was the last thing on his mind. Don't do it for a position. 
do it because it's the need. Yes, yes. The position will be there. Yes, amen. God says the gift will make room for you. Yeah. It that when you already doing it, that's how you get you know, I'll do it when I get there. Then you ain't going. Right. Hello. You know how they make five star generals? They find a four star that's being a five star, and they give them the stars. The simple, the, the very simple thing is, Benaiah was just being who he was. And he was being who he was when he encountered a lion. Right. Right. And when he encountered a lion, he remained who he was, and he realized someone had to do it. The greatest door of opportunity you walk through is the door that you're in charge of. It's the door, who, door of who you choose to be. Are you a hearer or a doer? Are you a someone who says... If I see it needs done, I'm doing it. Not, well, that's somebody else's job. Or that's not my responsibility today. Right now, presence of God is walking up. Listen, don't get me wrong. God has given you talents to be used. He gave you callings and abilities for a reason. But he doesn't want you to get to a place you can't handle. Because if you can't kill the lions at this level, you're going to have more lions if you put you in the next level. And you're going to become a feast for a pride of lions. So in reality, Beniah wasn't just chasing a lion. Beniah didn't realize it, but just like you and I don't realize it. I was chasing his destiny and he was able to accomplish it because he was being who he was, a man of integrity, a person of purpose. Here's the point. God is in the resume building business. He is always using your past experience to prepare you for a future opportunity. The struggle we have is those opportunities are often disguised as man-eating lions. Or self-denying. Jesus said unto his disciples, not believers, not the crowd, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself. Take up his cross. If your hands are full of the cross, you're going to find how little you need. And follow me. Amen. How will you react when you encounter the lions will determine your destiny? I get it. Many folks are saving themselves for the big moment. Some big moment in the future. That's when I'll give. That's when I'll win. When I get that spot, that... But to understand, because the integrity wasn't already in place, they missed it in all the small moments. With integrity and character were tested. You can all find things that get you noticed by people. You can spend your life building and doing things that get men's attention. There's plenty of things that are fairly easy. We're easy to impress. A shiny paint job will do it. A nice dress. Nice home. Men are going to pat you. You know, if you sing good right now, everybody's going, man, great, great. But when you kill that lion in private... Yes. Right. Yes. Amen. I didn't realize it, and I don't like talking about me, but sometimes the only way to make it real for people is to be transparent. I didn't even know. I was too dumb to know. My daddy wasn't no preacher. I did not get here by nepotism. I just showed up to youth camp one time. Now, one night, I mean, it was a pretty big youth camp. And I, I, you know what, like I said earlier, no, I'm not, 
I'm not a brain whiz. I'm not, I'm, I'm not a nerd. I'm just a grunt. And I saw the trash piling up after every time they ate. And I thought, okay, I, I'm nobody. I went over there. I just started taking the trash out. There was so much trash. I said, hey, can I borrow your trailer? And some dude, I grabbed the trailer. I grabbed my, and I started throwing it. And then every day, that whole did it. Went home. Next year, I did the same thing. But something happened. Because the following year, there was a thing called sectional conference come up. They said, hey, man, we're proud of you. Man, congratulations. What? You... They just appointed you sectional youth leader. You're now actually partially have a say at youth camp. Really? So I showed up there in the same old clothes and I took the trash out all week long again. Yeah, this time during service, I was up on the platform looking around at all the preachers that were there. What am I doing up here? Okay, yeah, I'm worshiping with everybody else. I, I'm just Steve Crow. Now all these guys with dads as preachers, and dads have these great churches, and here I am, my little home missions work, just trying to kill lions and save sheep. Yeah. Amen. 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 I did that for a number of years. Then they had this crazy idea that you know what? And I, they're having a district conference, and I go to it, and our youth secretary re retired. And I show up there, and I, I, you know, I don't want to hurt y'all's feelings, but I dress like this to honor the church and honor you, and it's, it, I believe it's right. Yes. But, man, I was just in regular old clothes, and there was a guy there, and I knew who he was, and, man, his dad was a great pastor, and he was a great guy, and he's walking around with a briefcase, handing out his card. He was Mr. And he looked the part. Yeah. And I realized what was going on. I, I'm not... Completely, so I learned a little bit by then. I knew the position was, did I want it? Uh, yeah. I didn't have to have it, but what an opportunity. Yes. Did I feel worthy? Absolutely not. Man, how, how can I compete with that guy? Look at his suit, look at his briefcase, and all I know how to do is take out the trash. Oh, but boy, I could take out that trash. Oh, yes. I made an art out of taking out that trash. Yeah. Yeah, I know you don't think that's important, but I took out that. Sister Carol, I took that trash out good. Yeah. You know, my dad may not have been around since I've been 16 years old, but i tell you one thing. He told me if I was going to work, to work hard. Yeah. Yes. And I, I think the reason I suffer so many ridiculous injuries at even a kind of relatively young age is because I, I, I took him at his word. I worked so hard, I've, I've destroyed myself. And here they, here, here they go. I, I literally was so, I don't like competition. I don't like when it comes to church. I just, just let me just be a regular Joe. Yes. yes. I don't mean to be using jobs. <laughs> let me just come to church, live for God, kill some lions, say some shit. I, I don't, yes. but it, it, I, I just, I'm just not emotionally equipped for all that stuff. I don't want to, the, the people in the ministry that meet, I, I'm not going to have competition in there. Right. I'm not doing it. You, you, you guys know, you start having competition, I'll throw you all out. Yeah. I, I, and there was a point here I was doing everything here by myself anyway. I had, I had a little bit of help and all that. And great, great people helping all that. But I'd rather go back to that than people getting at each other, not loving one another. That's We're all here to kill lions, not each other. Amen. And I didn't like because I knew the guy. We were friends. And I knew what he was doing. I was like, well, I'm not going to. I wasn't going to politic for it. I just shut my mouth. And I was late to it because I had been throwing up in the bathroom. Walked in there with my regular old shoes and my regular little pants, my regular little shirt. He looks like he's ready for the runway. Looking like Calvin Klein's little brother. I don't know. I know don't say this, Mike. Like all, I, all I knew how to do was take out the trash. And that district voted me in. First round, no, 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 no nothing. To district secretary. Yes. Still don't deserve it to this day because all, all I'm good for is taking out the trash. I'm a pastor that's good at taking out the trash. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. But my side job is killing lions yes. and saving sheep. Yeah. 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 
not worthy of nothing. Haven't earned nothing because I can't. And everyone is average until they face great odds. You have to decide if you're just willing to be an above average guy, willing to take out the trash, save some sheep, and kill some lions along the way. I wonder today, I wonder today as we all stand, we bow our heads and we realize there's a lion. Are you ready to lock eyes and make a decision? Maybe we've measured spiritual maturity the wrong way. Maybe, maybe following Christ isn't supposed to be as safe or civilized as we've tried to make it, make people believe it. Because I'm going to tell you right now, ministry and church is not manicured lawn and polished cars. Not Sunday suits and nice dresses. It, it's not a few choruses and a, and a comfortable sermon. Some, sometimes uh, we need to roll up our sleeves, Brother Terry, like you, and we need to realize it's just caring about the sheep, caring about the, the enemies of the cross and the lions that are trying to devour. Maybe Christ was more dangerous and uncivilized than our Sunday school flannel grass portrayed. Maybe the stale life of Christianity where all our needs are met and our refrigerators are full, our garages and closets are packed, are nothing what God envisioned. Because when you're more concerned about that lunch here in a few moments than doing something great for a fantastic God, I wonder if we've missed our moment. And I'm not really, I'd love to get everybody. But if I could find someone today that's decided the lion dies today, they're not going to coexist anymore. Oh. Oh, if we could raise up some lion chasers today. If we could find some that'll squint and look back at that lion and say, saving souls is more important than a savings in low. Anybody tired of applauding lion chasers from the sidelines? There's room in the game. 